Heavenly Father, we give all the praise and glory and honor to you because you're worthy, God. You're so good to us. So we pray, God, that you would bless this time that we're gathered, that you would get all of the glory, oh God, that you would draw us closer to yourself. God, that we would see you clearly, oh God. We pray that our worship would be acceptable to you, oh God, and that you would transform us as a result of hearing your word taught to us and being among each other, God, and, and worshiping you, God, and lifting up our praise to you, oh God, because we need you, God, and we love you, God. So we bless your name. We say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We recognize you as King and Lord and Savior this morning, and we're full of gratefulness, God. So bless this time. Move among us, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on, clap your hands.
your presence. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, Bless your name, Jesus. Thank you that that wherever two or three gather and they come together in your name, that there you make your abode, you you pitch your tent. God, we love your presence today. God, we thank you that you you meet us in our broken place. Thank you that you sit high, but you look low. Thank you that no matter what condition we find ourselves in today, you're willing to step down right into the midst of where we are. So like the songwriter declared, posture of our heart is, oh God, we love your presence. We love your presence. We love your presence. We love your presence. Lord, one thing have we desired of the Lord, and that will we seek, that we would dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in your temple, for in the time of trouble, you will hide us in your pavilion, in the secret place of your tabernacle, shall you hide us. And you'll set our feet high upon a rock around our enemies round about. And we'll offer sacrifices of joy in your tabernacle because we love your presence. We love your presence. We love your presence. So Father, reign in this place. Rule in this place fall fresh in this place. Heal, deliver, and set free in this place. Help us to experience the tangible impact of your presence. Lord, for your presence changes us. In the presence of Jehovah, hearts are mended. Troubles vanish. Help us to magnify you and allow all of our issues, worries, and anxieties shrink in your presence. Father, have your way in this place today. Thank you for getting us to this point in our day. Thank you for all you did on yesterday, all you've done last week, all you've done this month, all you've done this year, all you've done over the shoulder of our life. God, thank you. God, we're thankful for this moment this place we ask you to move by your spirit throw your weight around in this place so that our testimony leaving this place today would be that we love your presence do it for your own name's sake Lord (laughs) do it for your own name's sake Lord get all of the glory all of the honor All of the praise, all of the adoration, all of the hallelujahs, all of the thank you, Jesus. Everything that you deserve today, we make a commitment even now to give it all to you in this place. Glorify your son, edify your people, horrify the enemy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Warn those who are unruly. Comfort the faint-hearted. Uphold the weak. Be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone. But always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. May the Lord have a blessing. We're here to pray for the sick and shut in. Wow. The presence of the Lord is here. Father God, for us, once more again, we come before you with thanksgiving, God. For you are a true living God. And God, right now, we enter into your courts with thanksgiving. A heart filled with praise, God. God, we check the request list for the one that is uh, asking for prayer, God, for um, recovering from cancer, God, as we go through chemotherapy, God. Sister Emma Jacobs, God, we pray for our sister early boost, God. We lift up the Clark family, God. We lift up the Grace family, God. We uh, pray, God, for uh, Deacon Troy, God. We pray for a minister right, God. God, there is ones that travel on the highway that ask for traveling mercy back and forth, God. And then, God, there are some just asking for healing, God, uh, for various reasons. And God, we know that you are a prayer answering God. Yes, you are. And God, that there is nothing too hard for yes, thee, God. God. And God, we're so thankful that we can come to you, God, yes. and make our requests be, be made known, God. And you will come to our rescue. God, we're so grateful this time of Thanksgiving. And God, we thank you for you are able to deliver, God. God, we thank you because you are able to heal, God. And God, you are more than enough, God. So God, we cast all our cares upon you and leave it there. Now, now God, in the midst of the congregation, God, there's someone that dealing with sickness in the body. Pain, God. There's someone that dealing with marriage, God. They need healing. They need a relief, God. You are releasing, God. In the name of Jesus, God, rectify those situations, God. And God will give you the praise and the glory, God. And God, let us go back out different from the way that we came in, God. Let us go back out rejoicing because we know that our Savior lived because he lived within my soul, God. Do these things for us, God, and be so careful to give you all the praise that you so rightfully deserve because you are God of all people, God. And we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Man, this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Won't you jump on your feet as we sing this together today? Amen.
Amen. We were, we were reading Psalm 100 at East this morning, and I was thinking about uh, what that passage says. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that he is God, is he that's made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So, so, so when we come in, we come in with thanksgiving. We come in with praise. Why? Why? For the Lord is good. Yeah, his mercy endures forever. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. And, uh, and this morning we said that, that we give God praise as an act of our will. You know, we, we make a joyful noise to the Lord. That, that means in the Hebrew, make joyce, make noisy rejoicing. Noising, that's what it means, noisy rejoicing. It, it, means, it means sometimes, sometimes you got to make a little fuss about the goodness of the Lord. So I, I, know, I know some of you are like, well, I'm reserved and, you know, I'm able to just keep my composure. But then I saw you at the football game. No, you know, you know, like you know, I, it don't take all that, Dr. Bettner. You know, sometimes, but but then I saw you when Beyonce came on. It's quiet in the Lord's church. The psalmist says we ought to make noisy rejoicing. In other words, I get uncomfortable around people who say they love God, but can't never give them no praise. Say, say they're grateful for what He's done, but they always got their mouth closed. I wonder. Two or three people in the house to say, every time I wake up and open my eyes, I gotta make noisy rejoicing because it could have been another way. It didn't have to be this way. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I start making noisy rejoicing. Yeah, yeah. Y'all sit down, sit down. I'm 
much you appreciate. Tell him how grateful you are for all that he has done. For all, I wish I had some folks to really tell God thank you. Jesus joy we're excited to be in the house of the Lord you could have been anywhere this morning but God ordered your steps to be in this place and for that we're grateful and I want you to know that God is leaning over the balcony of heaven this morning and he doesn't just want to hear from the singers he doesn't just want to hear from our pastor he wants to hear from you today and I encourage you not to just sit on your do nothing and keep your mouth closed I encourage you I beseech you I invite you to give God praise today in a way that befits who he is in your, in your life. We like to do this around here. If there's anybody in the building that's visiting with us for the very first time and you'd like to stand up that we might acknowledge you and celebrate you. If you're here for the very first time, why don't you stand up? God bless you. I see you. Anybody else? Uh, God bless you. God bless you. I want you to do me a favor. If you're willing, would you just let us know your name and where you're from? Bless you. Bless you. Welcome all the way from Baltimore, Maryland. Yes. Bless you, Pastor and Pastor Reed. Amen. Well, we're glad to have you. you family. Amen. Bless you, Pastor. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Amen. Bless you, Pastor. Oh, yeah. Sir. Amen. Bless you. Welcome to Willenboro and welcome to Delaware Valley. Did I miss anybody, right? Amen. I got some family. I ain't going to put you on the spot. But what we like to do is we like to take five good minutes and meet and greet with folks around us. Would you do me a favor and make sure you shake hands with some of those folks that are visitors with us today? Let's make it five good minutes. And if somebody doesn't have a smile, would you give them one of yours? Yes, ma'am.
going back to our seats. We're going back to our seats. Amen. We got a treat. Amen. We're moving back to our seats. Amen. Amen. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Amen. 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 We're going to be blessed by our children. Amen. Wonderful.
give God another hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. We thank God for Reverend Gail. Amen. Who works with our children. Amen. Amen. Well, this is offering time. Amen. Amen. This is an opportunity that we can all participate in as our ushers come. Uh, I want to remind you we have three ways that we can give or multiple ways that we can give here. Obviously, you'll be able to give in the offering basket uh, with our incredible youth ushers. Come on, give our children ushers a hand, round of applause. You can also text DVBC to phone number 77977 or you can give online at rightwhereyouare.com. However you plan to give, I invite you to get your giving in your hand. If you're giving electronically, you can get your phone in your hand. Once you get it, jump on your feet uh, with me as we read together our offering litany and prepare to give. Everybody's giving. We have our giving in our hand. Once you get it in your hand, we're going to read this together. You ready? Yes. Y'all not ready? I'm waiting for you. Let's jump on our feet, get our giving in our hand as we prepare to give to our incredible uh, Father, our incredible Lord. Let's read this together. We come to worship with something in our head, a knowledge of who Jesus is, something in our heart, faith and belief in his lordship, and something in our hand, a gift to give to the Lord from the incredible bounty that God has blessed us with. And God has been good to, indeed he has. Father, thank you for this giving opportunity. We pray, Lord, you'd use the resource for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Bless the giver and the gift is our prayer. Help us, oh God, to give you what's right and not what's left. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 These fine folks will take their position. You face the outside aisles and follow the direction of the ushers. Y'all said, you don't know who's walking. Amen. Face the outside aisles. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We serve a giving God. Amen. Be thankful. Hallelujah. Oh, I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you forever. Forever. Forever and ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. For what you've done. For all. God, what you've done so much. So much. So much.
is come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Let's sing. All things come of thee. If you're a first-time visitor, be sure to fill out the visitor card and return it to an usher or greeter today. Hey family, did you realize that 2019 is only a few weeks away? And as the calendar changes, we want to ensure that everybody receives their 2019 offering envelopes in a timely fashion. We've noticed that many people use the pew envelopes given by ushers or give electronically online, and both of those options are great. And we also have many who utilize their personal box of envelopes throughout the year. So we want to know your personal pleasure. We will continue to have envelopes available every week for you to use. But if you want to use your personal box of envelopes in 2019, we need you to let us know before December 2nd. There are request forms for box envelopes in the Narthex. And you can also request box envelopes by email to info at rightwhereyouare.com. Please note that we will only purchase box sets for people who respond. However, envelopes will always be available from our incredible doorkeepers each week. Mark your calendars on Saturday, February 23rd, 2019 at the Woodcrest Country Club in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. We'll be celebrating our pastor's 20th pastoral anniversary. So we want you to come on out and celebrate the 20 year bounty that is our pastor that the Lord has blessed us with. Tickets are on sale now so please visit the table in the Narthex or purchase tickets on the church website or app. Join us this and every Wednesday at 12 noon or 7 p.m. for WOW! Worship on Wednesday. There's a transforming word and worship experience waiting for you.
come on, put your hands together if you're thankful this morning for the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. hospitals and some uh, funeral homes and see if it'll wake anybody up. Nobody getting up. Was it, it wasn't the clock that did it. The goodness of the Lord allow us to be in the land of the living one more day. Amen. Come on somebody, give God praise. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I pray that all of you had a wonderful Thanksgiving, a wonderful time with your families, I hope, and I pray. And I know that uh, the holiday season for some is a very difficult time because we have to deal with that empty chair, that, that place where somebody always was and they're not there anymore. So I know it's difficult. And uh, the good news is that, that because we got a good, good father, amen, he, he'll, 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 sympathize and empathize with you while you cry, but then he don't leave you there. Amen. He brings you in and say, look, you're never alone. Don't ever, don't ever feel that way. Glory to God. Amen. It's a, it's a, it's a great day coming for those of us who are redeemed. Amen. How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah, listen, that's why you ought to be giving thanks even in the valley of the shadow of death, but there's a great day coming. There's a great getting up morning. There's a great celebration. It's gonna happen. Glory to God, and we're gonna all be gathered around. Amen. Glory to God, the throne of God together. I look forward to that day. Amen. Amen. And in the meantime, I'm gonna rejoice in the Lord right where I'm at. Right through my tears, through my pain, through whatever I gotta go through, I'm gonna still give God glory. Give him praise, because he has been good in my life. Amen. Glory to God. I don't have to look far to see that the Lord's been good. Amen. 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 Glory to God. I'm glad that I can remember. Amen. Come on, somebody. Anybody remember? Amen. Amen. Yeah. I was out the other day when it was in the teens. And, uh, you know, it was cold and everything, but I was just rejoicing in the Lord. I'm like, God, you good. And I came and I was telling Denise, I said, you know what, it's cold, but you know what? I walked right out and walked right back in the house. I didn't, I didn't have to stand on the corner and wait for the trolley. How many remember that? Stand, stand on the corner waiting on the trolley like. 
Oh man, y'all don't know nothing about that. I can tell how you react. <laughs> I, I listen, didn't have to walk four blocks in the cold with the wind blowing. Walked out my door, I could get in my car, close the door, turn the heat on. Come on. I remember, that's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> when I remember where he found me, I'm all right about where I'm at. Come on, somebody. <laughs> amen, amen. Remember walking blocks to get to the subway. Glory to God, just to get on the train. Had to freeze to death to get to the subway. Come on. Y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all still don't get it. Y'all still don't get it. Amen. We, we take, yeah, we take so much. We got, so, we got it so good. We got it so good. We, we just take it for granted, man. Come on, somebody. And some of, some of these, some of the younger people, they have no clue what I'm talking about. They, they never been cold. Amen. I know, I know I'm right. Hell. I don't know what it means to be cold, for real. But uh, God is good. He's faithful. I'm so grateful to him for uh, the song said, Psalmist says, his loving kindness is better than life. And I believe that with my whole heart. We thank God for you. Like I said, I pray you had a good Thanksgiving. We're going to dig into the word in a few moments. Let's thank God for the young people standing on the door today. God bless you guys. Appreciate everybody serving in the house of the Lord on today. Amen. We're going to dig into the word this morning for a few moments. And from, uh, I'm going to look at several scriptures, but I'm going to start with um, Luke's gospel, chapter 17. Luke's gospel, chapter 17. Begin at verse 11, reading through verse 17, reading from the new King James Version this morning. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, beginning at verse 11. It says, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered the, a certain village, there, he met, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Yeah. And so when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests so that it was that they went and they were cleansed. Yeah. And one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, he returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And so Jesus answered and said, uh, were, were there not ten cleansed? Uh, but where are the nine? That's a good question. <laughs> nine out of ten ain't thankful. The word of the Lord for the people of God this morning. Father, bless these moments in your word. Sanctify the truth in our heart, Lord God, that we might not sin against you. That you might be glorified in our lives and the things that we do and the things that we say. Father, we pray that you would move amongst us in this place on today, that you would show yourself strong on our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I got a toot. That's the title of my message. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, I got three twos. <laughs> amen, somebody. Um, how many know what a toot is? Yeah, yeah, some of y'all do. Some of y'all old enough to know what I'm talking about. And where my grandkids at? They all looking at me like, what, Papa, please. <laughs> I don't mean, uh, I'd be embarrassing them, man, with my old stories. That's all right. That's all right. But I do, I have a two. And um, we, all, we all have one. Amen. I want to talk about three, three twos in the context of this text in Luke. Chapter 17, this is an interesting story. Some of you guys know the story from Sunday school. Some of you know it because you study the scriptures, and some of you don't have a clue of what it's all about. But it's a story about Jesus passing through uh, a village um, that was a, a Gentile village. It was a, a group of people that were not uh, a part of the commonwealth of Israel. They were not redeemed people. They did not possess the law of God. They did not have the word of God. They were, they were considered less than. 
Amen. But, but, but outside of the city uh, limits, there were some men that approached Jesus. They were all lepers. Lepers. Leprosy is a disease of the skin that was so contagious and so uh, deadly that uh, you were not allowed. You had to leave your family. You had to leave town. You were not allowed in town if you had leprosy. Not, not only were you not allowed in town, but you could not worship in the synagogue. You couldn't worship the Lord. You were, you were in this situation. It was a horrible situation. Ultimately, it was deadly. It would take your life. It was a, it was a terror. It, it, it produced not only sores and boils on the skin till your limbs fell off, but it produced an odor that was repugnant. It was not a good place to be, a leper. It was not good to be a leper. And in fact, it, in the Jewish law, it was so that if you had leprosy and you were walking down the street and you saw other people coming, you had to make an announcement to them, unclean unclean so that they could cross the street they wouldn't have to come near you it was it was a deadly disease and but but what's interesting about these 10 men we know that at least nine of them was jews amen they were a part of the commonwealth of israel and and so they they understood the law of god but one of the guys was not he was not Amen, somebody. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. When you're in, in a terrible situation and folk, other people in a terrible situation, all y'all in the same boat. <laughs> Nobody checking for your cream card. Amen. We just see everybody as the same, okay, in that situation. So Jesus uh, is approached by these 10 men, and they, they cry out to him. I love the passage because they didn't really ask him for nothing. You know, if you, did you notice that? And he entered the village where he met ten men who were lepers who stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices, and what they did say was, have mercy on us. Amen. How many of you ever cried out to the Lord to have mercy on you? And when Jesus saw them, that's the kind of prayer the Lord, the Lord loves. You know, the Lord is not crazy about all these prayers about give me this and give me that. Come on. My mom would say, and give me the yellow cat. <laughs> God's not all that impressed with those prayers, but he is impressed with the prayer that says, Lord, have mercy on me because I'm a mess. Ain't, nobody, ain't no messes in the building. Have mercy on me because if you don't have mercy on me, I'm done. God hears that. Amen. Because your heart is in the right place now. You're in a position to be blessed. I mean, no, you got to be in the right position to be blessed. These men, they cried out to Jesus. They lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. And you know, sometimes you got to be at the very bottom before your eyes are open. Come on, somebody. So, so, sometimes, you know what, it don't matter who in the boat with you, we all sinking. We all about to drown. And, and listen, Master, you know, you know Jesus differently when you're in the, in the bottom of the ship and the ship is sinking. Amen. Some of us, we sing songs about Jesus like he's a, a friend of ours. Come on, somebody. We don't see him as master, ruler. Come on. God himself, we just see him, oh, he's really a nice fella. Hey, Jesus, we love you. Hey, Jesus, you're nice. Uh, you're, no. When you're, in, when you're in the bottom of the ship and the ship is about to sink, you see Jesus differently. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. We are hopeless and helpless without you. There's nobody, nowhere that can help us other than you. Master, have mercy on us. These lepers, they cried out to Jesus, and, and I love Jesus. He didn't need to go touch them. He ain't had to pour a quart of oil on them. He didn't have to do nothing. He didn't give them no holy handkerchief. He didn't give them nothing. He just said, listen, go and see the priest. I love that. You know why? Because as they were Let me say this real quick. There's so many lessons in here. 
Sometimes, you know what, that's what keeps us from getting blessed. Because we want to negotiate. We want to tell God how good we've been or, or, you know, I did what you said and, and so you ought to do whatever you're going to do right here, right now. He said, no, go see the priest. And as they listened and as they obeyed and as they were going, he did what it was he was going to do. Somebody ought to get what I'm saying. Amen, somebody. Some of us need to stop trying to negotiate a better deal with God and start listening to him. Stop trying to impress God with how much you know and show God by how you act. And so forth, verse 14. And so he saw them and they said, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And so it was that they, what? Went. And they were cleansed. It wasn't that the priest was going to cleanse them. That's probably what they were thinking. We get to the priest, the priest is going to do something. But the reality is the one who told you to go is the one who had the power to do something in your life. The one who calls us to repentance is the one that can change our lives. He don't have to do no magic over us. All he got to do is, all we have to do is obey him. Somebody hearing what I'm saying this morning. See, it's it's about gratitude. Watch this. Jesus tells them to go as they're going. They get healed. Everybody gets cleansed. All 10 of them get cleansed. But watch the reaction of the one. Talking about the attitude of gratitude. And so when... And so it was that they went and they were cleansed, verse 15. And the one of them, he, when he saw that he was healed, he returned and with a loud voice, what did he do? Glorified God and fell on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. You know, I, I said earlier, I said they were all outcasts. They were all lepers. Yeah. This boy was a double outcast. Yeah. Not only was he a leper, but he was a Samaritan. He was from the wrong side of the tracks. He didn't know nothing about the law of Moses. Come on, somebody. He was an outcast in his own country. But here's the thing I want you to see about a heart of gratitude. See, a heart of gratitude will make you turn around. Amen. It'll it'll really make you, when you're really grateful, it'll make you stop what you're doing and turn around. You know what else happens when you turn around? You become a real worshiper. Yes, amen. 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 Ain't, ain't no worshipers in the building. We got a lot of church folk, but very few worshipers. You become a real worshiper when you got a heart of gratitude. Let me tell you something. When you're a real worshiper, you're not worrying about whether you got your head did. No, you're not. You're not worrying about whether you're going to sweat your suit out. That, ain't, that don't even cross your mind. You fall on your face. It's, it's right here in the text. I'm just going read to the, read the text. You know, sometimes the text do all the talking. Yes. Amen. And I, and I just happen to be here to help you read it. Amen. Right. Notice what it says, 15. And one of them, when he saw he was healed, amen, he returned with a loud voice. What did he do? He began a worship service right there on the spot. He didn't need nobody there with him. He just started glorifying God. God, you have been good to me. Amen. I woke up this morning. I was a leper. I, was, I had no hope. I was lost. I was tur- Anybody been turned out and lost and didn't feel like you had any hope? He didn't have any hope, but when he realized what the Lord had done, he, with a loud voice, he glorified God. Not only did he glorify God, but it says he fell on his face at his feet. Giving him thanks. Amen. Part of the problem we have with worship is we think worship is performance. Amen. Amen. We think we performing and it ain't performance. Worship ought to be birthed out of the relationship that we have with God. That God has really been that good to us. My worship is not uh, predicated on the fact that I'm the pastor. Amen. My worship, I have worship because of what the Lord has done and how he has adopted me. Anybody adopted in here? He's adopted me in his family. 
Not that I deserve to be in his family. Not that I earned it. Not, cause, not that I did a whole bunch of real good stuff. People can say he's really a good guy. He's done a lot of wonderful things in the community. And I, that ain't why. That ain't why. He adopted me. He was able to look at my stuff. All of my stuff. You got stuff. Don't sit there like you don't have no stuff. God, look past your... This one guy, and I like how that, that verse finishes, it says, and he was a Samaritan. Yeah. <laughs> he was a double outcast. Yeah. Maybe sometime, you know, you got to really be at the bottom mm -hmm. to appreciate what the top is like. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 Some of us, we've had it so good. Yeah. Been so well with us. Yeah. Pastor, could you turn the... Turn the heat down, cause they, these folks sleep. <laughs> hit that, hit that, hit that thermostat for me. Turn the air conditioner on. <laughs> Amen. I ain't, I ain't joking though. Y'all laughing, <laughs> but I ain't joking. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We have, we, we have it so good. We don't, we don't realize how blessed we are. Come on. We, 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 we really, sometimes I watch folk and it's like we doing God some kind of favor. Well, he ought to be happy I'm here. No, I, why? Why should he be happy you here? <laughs> That's right. You better be happy you here. Not him. We, we reverse it. We flip it. We want God to be just satisfied. I, I, I'm in church. What do you want from me? Oh, that's how you feel. <laughs> but this guy, everybody else went on about their business. They was all in the same boat. They was all lepers. They were all dying. They had no hope in the world. They cried out to Jesus. Jesus intervened on their behalf. He's done that in my life for many a time, intervened on my behalf. And you know what? 20 minutes later, I'm walking around like I did something. Yeah, I was lucky. No, you wasn't lucky, buddy. God's been, come on, somebody. Attitude. Gratitude leads to, comes from an attitude. Whether or not I'm grateful, it springs out of an attitude of my heart. Uh, I use this definition that um, I don't know if it's original to me. But I said uh, ad the attitude is a outward manifestation of an inward disposition. All right, true. See, even though I'm going through a difficult time, I think I'm entitled to be doing better. Yeah. So if God blesses me and I do better, I ain't grateful. Because <sighs> I had a disposition on the inside that makes me think I'm entitled. And my attitude is the outward expression of what's really in my heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. That's why so many of us are living beneath our privilege with God. Amen. As believers, because we got this entitlement mentality about what God ought to do for me. You know, no matter what I did to offend God, no matter how many times I sinned against God, I'm feeling like, well, you know what, it's me. You need to fix this because it's me, God. I don't know, I don't know why I got to go through all this. It's me. And you know that time you asked me to do that thing, I did it, and, and you kind of owe me something. It's, 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 it's the attitude that blocks your gratitude. Yes, amen. Something's got to change inside of us. Yes, amen. Notice this. Just, just dealing with, with this, this idea of attitude. 
Uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, he says, for who, makes, uh, for who makes you differ from another? And what do you have that you did not receive? Now, if you did indeed receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received it? You know, in, in just plain English, say Paul is saying, you know what? Anything you have, God gave it to you. You ain't no different than nobody else. So why you walking around like you got that you got it on your own? Like if it wasn't for you, God, God had a problem. If it wasn't for you, God was in trouble. No. He said, listen, anything you have, you have received it. See, the disposition of the heart has to be, you know what, whatever I got, God gave it to me. When, when, I, when I got the right attitude, you know what? Being generous is easy. When my attitude stinks, I'm always thinking about how I'm not giving. I'm not helping nobody. I'm not doing nothing that makes me stretch. Come on, y'all, yeah. I know, I know. It's Thanksgiving, right, Pastor? Why are you, why are you beating us? Good, because you need a beating. <laughs> no, but for real. You know, we, we, we think that way. We, we think in our minds, we decide that, you know what? I don't need to help nobody. I'm trying to get mine. Yeah, yeah. You get yours. Wow. But when I got a grateful heart, yes, yes. and I realized that anything I have, God gave me. Yes, Even, you know, my ability. Some of you got great jobs. You, you, making, you, got, you, you, you were... You were uh, very smart and you did well in school and you got a good opportunity and God opened the door for you. And you know, after a few years of working on your job and saving money, and you really think you did it. Yeah. No, you really do. You really think it's, all, it's yours, it's mine. I, I work for this, this is mine. Get away from that. Why is he talking about my stuff? Because <laughs> it ain't yours. And it's a trick of the enemy that, that, that makes you think it's yours. And guess what? As much as you have, you still haven't walked in the blessing yet. <sighs> Why? Because you're self-sufficient. God is not looking for self-sufficient people. He's looking for Christ-sufficient people. People that are resting in the Lord. You know why you could be generous when you're uh, resting in Christ? Because he gave you what you got. And guess what? This is what I found out. If he gave it to me before, he'll do it again. Not, not, not he can do it again. He will do it again. Amen. When I start displaying Christ-like characteristics of love and kindness and giving mercy to people that need mercy, come on, somebody. I, and when I say give, all of, automatically y'all start thinking about your money. But when I start treating people right, loving on people, amen, demonstrating with my heart, with my, with, with my actions that I belong to the Lord, Guess what? Then the passage of Malachi makes sense. You can't beat. He will open up the windows and you can't spend it all at the store. Paul said, what do you have? that you did not receive. What you got in the bank? Somebody didn't give you. Yeah. Then why do you walk around acting like it's yours? Like you did it. See, it's an outward manifestation of a condition of the heart. And what we need is God to change our hearts yes, yes. then we can really have thanksgiving yes. then we can really give thanks to the Lord yes. 
Amen. And it won't just be while we sit around the table on, on the third Thursday of, the, of November, and we, fourth Thursday of November, and we'll call it Thanksgiving. No, it'll be every day. Every time I open my eyes. And it's still called today. Come on, somebody. That's Thanksgiving. Every time I see my loved ones. And we ain't, listen, and we able to hang out with each other and share a meal together. That, guess what? That's Thanksgiving. Come on, somebody. Every time I can get up in the morning and walk myself to the bathroom and glory to God and turn on the shower and clean myself up, go in my closet and got several choices as to what I want to put on. I'm going to tell you something. That's a day of Thanksgiving. Amen. I said it at the beginning. Every day I don't have to go stand on the corner and wait for the twi on the 23 trolley to come down Germantown Avenue. That's a day of Thanksgiving. Anybody hear what I'm saying? It's a day of Thanksgiving. What do you have that you have not received? And if you received it, why do you boast as if you didn't? Why do you act like you entitled? Gratitude, attitude, and the third one is altitude. Yes. You know, with the, with the attitude of gratitude, God will take you higher than you ever been. Amen. He'll take you farther. He'll give you a view of life that you've never seen before. Yes. The reason most of us have in trouble is because we can't see. Yes. Amen. Come on, somebody. We walk around bumping into stuff. God says, I want to lift you up above all of that foolishness. Yes. I want to give you the long view. Amen, somebody. You know, as a pastor, part of what we do is we pray and ask God, God, show us the long view. Amen. I see what happens every Sunday, but, but I need to see what's going to happen five years from now. And I need to see where you're taking us. Amen. So we can lead the people in the right direction. That's what God loves to do. He loves to take you way up high so you can see real far, real wide, so you don't have to step in the same hole over and over and over again. The reason you're stepping in that hole is because your attitude is wrong. When your attitude is wrong, your gratitude is wrong. But if you want the right, if you get the right attitude, and by being grateful for what God has done, he will give you the altitude to move through your life in a new and powerful way. I preached on this last Sunday. I'm going to close with this in these last couple minutes, how he does this thing with the altitude, how he lifts us up. Isaiah chapter 40, we talked about it last Sunday. He says this, uh, uh, beginning in verse 29. He says, he gives power to the weak. If you can stop right there and start shouting. He gives power to the weak. Uh, has he ever given you power? To those who have no might, he increases strength. You got the right attitude. <laughs> I'll give you power. I'll give you strength. I'll give you might. But you got to be right in your thinking. Stinking thinking to keep you from getting where I want to take you. Come on, somebody. An attitude of gratitude will lift you high above your circumstances. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. How many know how you how many have kids? And you know, you get up in the morning and they start running. They start playing. They in everything. Look like you, you be trying to get them to take a nap. Take a nap. Not sleepy. <laughs> Not tired. They got to run until they just tilt over. Boom. Now they, now they sleep. That's what, this is what the, Isaiah is saying. Even the youth will faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. You watch these young men playing professional sports, running up and down, and glory to God, and getting fit so they can play their sport. Yeah, yeah. And some of us look at them and like, oh my God, I'm tired just looking at you. Do what you do. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Glory to God. How many remember when you could run like that? 
Amen. Play ball from sun up to sundown. Mom had to come looking for you. Boy, get home. <laughs> Got something for you to do. Oh, mom, want to play some more. Even the young men shall utterly fall. Can I get a witness here? But those that wait upon the Lord. <laughs> this is God's promise to his people. Shall renew their strength. <laughs> ah. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. The thing I love about an eagle is the eagle don't get caught up in the clutter. Come on, somebody. He flies at, if everybody else flying at 2,000 feet, he goes up to 5,000 feet. He don't get caught up in all the noise and all the foolishness. He gets up above everything. Then he can see far as he needs to see. He can spot that mouse running on the ground, come on somebody, at a mile away. And he knows where his next meal is coming from. Can I get a witness? He ain't worried about where he gonna eat because God has lifted him up above everything. He knows where his next meal is coming from. Anybody listen to what I'm saying? That's part of our problem. We can't see nothing. So we don't know nothing, and we act just like we don't know, because we can't see. God says, I'm going to lift you up. Yeah. He'll mount up on wings like eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. You got to have the right attitude to get the right altitude. When you get the right altitude, you can see where you're going. Come on, somebody. You can see the enemies and his plans. You can see the ditch that was dug for you. But when your attitude is stinking, you just going to step in the same hole over and over and over again, when you think that God owes you something, you're going to find yourself in the same predicament that you was in the last time. How many ever been in that predicament before and said to yourself and anybody that would listen, I'll never be in this spot again. God, if you get me out of this, I won't do it again. But somehow we wind up in the same old hole wind up in the same old situation is cause we got our head down. The story was told about the baby eagle that fell uh, in the chicken coop. And the mother chicken saw the little baby eagle and she nurtured the, the baby eagle. She let him sit underneath her like all of the other animals. But what was happening as the eagle began to grow with the chickens, uh, he found that the chickens always had their head down, trying to get something crawling on the ground. And something inside of him said, uh, why is your head down? Why are you always looking at the ground? And then a big eagle flew by one day, and he lifted up his head, and he saw the eagle fly by. And something inside of him said, boy, you ain't no chicken. Lift your head up. That's where you supposed to be. You supposed to be soaring over this thing. That's what I'm trying to tell you today. You got to lift your head up. You got to stop thinking you just a chicken. God made you to be an eagle. He wants you soaring over your circumstances. He wants you above and not beneath. He wants you over and not under. Is anybody listening to what I'm saying this morning? God made you to be an eagle, to mount up on wings like an eagle. Soar above your circumstances. Every day, I'm grateful to God.
because one day he opened my eyes and let me see that I wasn't a chicken. I didn't have no business down there in the chicken coop with my head down clucking for some corn. Gave me the ability to soar above it. Once he opened my eyes, you know what? Then I had to do what he said. As you are going, as you go forward, you can't be the same. When you leave here today, you can't be the same. If you are, let me tell you right now, you in open rebellion against God. God said, lift up your head. Stop acting like a chicken. You're an eagle, a noble bird, a ruler of the sky. And I have renewed your strength. Now mount up and fly. Soar above your situation, above your circumstances, standing on your feet all over the building. I got a two, don't worry about me. Pastor got a bad attitude, bad in a good way. Because the Lord has been real good in my life. And the first thing he did was open my eyes. And he showed me that you don't belong down there. Get up here give you strength that you don't have and I'm saying that to you because God is no respecter of persons he'll transform your life even today even today he's able to do it if you're able to believe it if you're able to receive it God certainly can do it his arms are not short and he's no respecter of persons heads are bowed eyes are closed if you hear this morning The Spirit of the Lord is urging you, letting you know he don't want you to stay in the same state you're in, but he wants to change your destiny. He wants to change your future. If you're here today and that's where your heart is, you want to be saved. I'm not talking about church membership. Too many church members are going to bust hell wide open because they haven't gotten saved. You need to be born again, born from above. If you're here today, you want to be saved right where you are slip your hand up because I want to pray for you God does the saving pastor don't do no saving I can't save nobody can't save myself but God can you hear you want to be saved right where you are slip your hand up is there one need to be saved Jesus Christ is son forgiven. We're growing in grace in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. If that's your heart's desire, right where you are, just slip your hand up. We want to pray with you. We want to pray with you.
Thank you, God, for everything that you've done. Thank you for healing our bodies. Thank you for healing our minds. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for our family near and far. Thank you for our friends and our loved ones. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for this great country we live in. Thank you for our leaders, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're doing a work here. We don't get it. We don't understand it. We don't claim to. But we believe that you sit high and you look low. That you rule and you super rule. And that there's no authority above you. Our hope is in you and not in another. Now, God, as we go up from this place with hearts of thanksgiving, go before us. Be with us. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the blessed Holy Spirit be our portion now and forever. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you one and all. Go in peace.